Japan are here from Jumbo. Never in my wildest dream did I ever think that I'll be sharing with you guys that we are actually opening up a bank in the UK and Europe. But more on that later. Come along for now. And one of the problems that my dad used to always tell me about Africa is its children always leave. But we got a solution for that. For a while now, we've been trying to come up with a solution. So we came up with Jumbo. Now what is Jumbo? Look at it this way. You're living in the diaspora, in the UK perhaps. You're looking to build a home back in Africa. You're looking to invest on a dollarized basis so that one day you can retire in luxury. Jumbo is the solution for that. Now what is the problem? Africa is over a billion people in population, millions of people in the diaspora. We believe that Jumbo will create an opportunity, first of all, for interaction between the diaspora and the continent, but secondly, and most importantly, a chance for you to earn yield, to generate a return on your hard-earned money. Jumbo will be a solution for that. We'll be a UK-licensed digital bank creating investment opportunities in microfinance and real estate. We believe that Jumbo is going to be part of the African future, and we want you to walk with us on this journey. Now, here is the best part. For as little as £100 or even £10,000, you guys get to own about 20% of Jumbo uh, by simply clicking this link. And after you're done, you go ahead, tell a friend to tell a friend. Come along. Anybody that knows me personally knows that I'm just a kid from the streets of Rimuka Kadoma. None of that should happen to people like me, so I thought. And today, today, I'm going to teach you one or two things. I'm not here to tell you that, you know, I started with a feather and now I have a chicken farm. I'm going to teach you very simple things that changed my life. I came here. The idea was for me to come and teach a bunch of youngsters like you you know, some of the few things that we've learned over the years so that your journey is way shorter than mine because that's what life is about, right? You know, where I'm from, we say that if you are ever lucky enough to catch a break in life, it's your responsibility for you to send the elevator back down. And I'm hoping by the time we're done today, I would have done just that so that you are in a position to do the same thing a year from now, two years from now, even 20 years from now. So thank you very much uh, for coming. And uh, before everything else, I must say, you know, I came here simply with the idea of coming to actually teach a bunch of youngsters on how you can do these things. Because what's possible for one, my God, is possible for everybody. All right? This is a lesson that came to me a little late. It came to me when I was 33 years old. I know I look 21, but, <laughs> but I've done my time. Uh, so the lesson came a little later than it should have, but um, it's here now. And I'm hoping the 15-year-old in you today, the 35-year-old that's here today, can get to learn things that is actually a much simpler way to actually achieve each and every dream that you have. Right? And the reason why I always say, I always want to speak about the beginnings because the end result can be very intimidating, All right? Let's, for example, you want to start a church. Do not make the rookie mistake of looking at the outcome of Baba and, and Mama's Makandiwa's church. That for you at the beginning will intimidate you to the point of not starting. Does that make sense? If you can crack that, you've cracked the secret to succeeding. But all things before we go ahead, I have to say, I came here thinking I was going to teach. I've said that three times already because I actually have found the secret to why UFI C does so well. You guys might not know it, but you have a way 
of making people feel important. Right? My mother has always made me feel like the world evolves around me. But today, I felt more important. <laughs> Thanks to UFIC, you know. I came in, I've never been called say in the last 24 hours as much as I've been called say, right? And that, for me, is something that you guys can pick up on as well. In life, everyone walks around with an invisible sign on their forehead that says, make me feel important. You do that, you become millionaires, billionaires, because you understand no one makes money. We all have to earn it, right? There's a difference. Provide value and the value will be reciprocated in currency, in relationships, in all sorts of things. And in me, UFI C has a friend for life. Yeah. Let's start with uh, a quick question. How many of you, by a show of hand, ever dream they badly want to achieve? Say, I. I. Right? It's quite a lot. There's a few people who don't have any dreams, but that's a story for another day. The secret, right? And I'm sure the reason why most of you have not achieved some of the things that you want to go out and achieve is purely, one, you don't think you know exactly what you need to do to achieve these dreams. Am I correct? There's no gusto in that answer. Am I correct? Yes. Fantastic. Now here, can you please write this down? Because this is not an intellectual sort of uh, way of looking at things. I am living testimony of that. I'm standing in front of thousands of people as a function of the next few words I'm going to tell you. And if you take these words and take them very seriously, six months from now, the discussion me and you are going to have is going to be completely different. I'm no prophet, by the way, but there's a science to these things, right? So there we go. You do not need to know anything to get started. Can I say that one more time? You do not need to know anything to get started. But to know everything, my brothers and sisters, you have to start. Right? There is no other complexities around that. The problem with our mind is we think, you know, we need to anticipate the entire journey from here to Chinoy. But in actual fact, you just have to start the car. Does that make sense? Right? And why I am such a fan of that is because I am just a kid from the slums of Rimu Kakadum. If you ever have a minute to actually take a trip down there and just and see the kids down there and see how restrictive and the options that you have, you would have no idea that I'm standing here because I've started a multi-million dollar company right in the heart of London, UK. All right? And I say this not to impress you, but to impress upon you that what's possible for one is possible for all. Right? And I don't think people understand the gravity of that. I think very often you stand, you look at, oh, look at what other people are doing. That's not something that I can actually achieve. So, to get a better understanding of my story, I'm just going to go all the way back to 1966, right? So that we relate better, because sometimes, you know, when people speak, people don't identify well with uh, 
what people are talking about because, you know, my, my, I'm here, you're there, what you're saying doesn't make sense. So back in 1966, uh, my parents, Plaxidia Chikaranini and Ziwanai Chikaranini, met at some random place uh, in rural Chirumanzu. Uh, I don't know if anybody's from Asingo here. <laughs> they met, had their first ch child, and uh, back in 1970 or so, right? They had my first brother. So back then, you know, our mothers had to move into our father's sort of homestead, uh, as was customary. I think it's still applicable nowadays, but in a different way, huh? So my mother moved over to a place called Chiwi. Um, <laughs> well, we've got a Chiwi person in here. Moved to Chiwi, uh, had their first son, and then unfortunately, my mother fell very ill, you know, uh, bedridden, and instead of being an asset to the family, she was perceived to be a liability. So that was child number one. Child number two, same thing. My mother gets pregnant, and for the most part, she falls ill. So instead, again, of being an asset around the house, it's people around her that have to take care of her. Now she's a liability. Happens again, child three. So my grandfather calls for a meeting and says, you know what, this has to stop on child three. We can't have this anymore because you are here as a helping hand, but we are here taking care of you instead. So my mother, you know, the rebel in there hadn't come out just yet. She starts taking uh, anti-pregnancy pills as recommended. Um, and mind you, Taquana is not here just yet. Um, she starts uh, taking uh, anti-pregnancy medication. And then one day, you know, this is not something that I'm cooking up myself. This is a story my own mother told me. My mother turns around and says, she's home in Chiwi, and my, her mother, my maternal grandmother, is in Chirumanzi. And a strange thing happens. One random day, she has a dream. Not once, not twice, but three times in one night where a gentleman comes to her in a dream and says, go and tell your daughter to stop taking those pills she's taking because she's going to have a child that's going to take care of her. entirely based on a true story, right? Uh, and this is a story I only got to find out a couple of years ago from my mother. Nine months later, Taquana is born. Wow. Right? The unwanted child. Surprise, surprise, my mother is not bedridden. Surprise, surprise, I'm the only child who didn't give my mother any pain when I was born. Right. And surprise, surprise, a couple of years down the line, I retired my mother. I did take care of my mother, as the gentleman had said in my maternal grandmother's dream, right? But going back, 1983, Taquana is born. The 24th of August, August baby. <laughs> right in the chaos of the cold weather. And the one thing that I know about being born in Chiwi that's transcending to what I'm doing today is as the prose of it goes, zero, ziedzwa. Chimberi, yakwa chiwi, yakabika mabwe. Right. For my non Zimbabwean friends, is uh, simply translates to things are meant to be tried. 
an old lady in Chiwi, where I was born, cooked up stones and herself some soup. Better soup than they serve at UFIC. I'm kidding. <laughs> Food here is the best. Um, and there you go. You've got a young man born in rural Kaduma. And follow me. I mean, it, it'll all make sense. You've got a young man born in, in the rural of Chiri. At best, all I knew was to take care of cattle. And then we moved to uh, my neighborhood, the place that made me who I am for the most part. It's the place where I learned to fight. Took a lot of losses, to be honest. I was completely garbage at fighting. But it builds that resilience. Rimuka Kadoma. Here I was in a city where I just felt, you know what, my options are restricted to being at best a bus driver. That's how I felt at the time. And again, if you're with me, it speaks to what's possible. You've got a young man who has limited options, living in very dire circumstances, and now I am here, being flown by these beautiful people to come and speak to you guys, because I have a story that happened purely because I got started, right? Fast forward, grade one, I went to Martindale Primary School, a Catholic school. As a child, I thought that was the worst decision my parents could do for me because who sends their child to boarding school at grade one all the way to form four? But the good thing about Martindale Catholic School is it's deeply embedded a faith in me you can never shake off. I might go wayward, I might do this and that, but I always come back to God. Very smart kid at the time. And unfortunately, I went to Chaplin High School and I used to think I was Kobe Bryant back then. Uh, so my attention was just about playing basketball. My grades just went down the wrong place. Um, and then come the 7th of October, 2002. I remember this day like yesterday because that's the day the trajectory of my life changed. A friend invited me over to the UK and I found myself flying over to London, away from my beautiful Rumuka and everything that they taught me. And what's important about that particular date, it speaks to something that I was having a conversation with someone before I came on. Sometimes in life, succeeding in what you're trying to do is a function of not necessarily what you do, but the environment you're in. If you take a fish and place it outside, chances are it won't make it. Take that same fish, put it back in there, you will find that it will succeed way better purely because of the environment that it's in. Right? And there I am in the UK, surrounded. So I'm hoping you're picking up a couple of things that you should then implement in your own life. Okay, I'm trying to achieve this. Maybe this is not the environment for me. Maybe I have to go this way and surprise, surprise, certain things will happen. So those are the kind of things where I feel like storytelling is always the best way to convey any message to anybody. Right? Am I with you there? Fantastic. So here I am in the UK. And again, we spoke about environment. I was in an environment where every Zimbabwean I was around was working for the National Health Service. And guess what? Monkey see, monkey do, right? You're always going to think what's possible for you hinges on what other people that look and talk like you are actually doing. Do you see why you need to choose your friends wisely, right? Because you are going to be. If you're a friend nine with people who act a certain way, you're going to be that number 10 who is doing exactly what they're doing in terms of how much money they earn. That's how much the environment you, you earn in terms of what they speak about, in terms of what they dance to, in terms of what they drink and things of that nature. So here I am. 
that environment we're talking about is full of people who are working for the National Health Services, a very noble profession, if you ask me. And surprise, surprise, I do the same thing. I become what's called a mental health practitioner, working with kids, best 15 years of my life, because then I got to understand how the mind operates. It can make a living hell or a living heaven of any given situation. It's not what happens, it's how you interpret it. That's it. And these are lessons I learned whilst as a mental health practitioner. So here I am, uh, 15 years down the line, and you know God has a funny way of, uh, you know, you pray to God for, for strength, God has a funny way of giving you problems, huh? And it's very methodical for that reason. It's just trying to make you strong. Surprise, surprise, I'm accused of all sorts of things at work. And I end up losing my job. Huh? You spoke about darkness. It's not the devil's darkness. It's there for your own good. <laughs> huh? Knock, knock. My uh, business partner, Ibrahim Asumano, knocks on the door. Mind you, he's been knocking all along. I just didn't, I'm in a good place, but now I'm in a different place. I'm in a dark place, right? So the message is received much better. I've got this idea, my brother. We want to get the African diaspora to send airtime back home. Most people, I think about 70% of the population, only sends money. But if we can get them to send airtime, we might have something, you know, be a little side hustle of ours that we do. Right? I was like, you know what? You found me in the right place. I'll give this a crack. Again, that darkness is very necessary. We all need it. You know, certain messages will never land if you're succeeding. Success tends to just make you more arrogant. Failing in life humbles you in ways where you become more receptive to a lot of things. So here I am, I said, I'll give this a crack. I say, okay, have you built the system I have? Give, give me, uh, I'll give it a try, it was a website. Sent two pounds worth of airtime to my mother, two pounds. And my mother being my mother, she made me feel like I told her, go and see Victor. <laughs> You know? And then immediately, it dawned on me, we're not selling airtime, we're selling connectivity with people that feel a distance away from their loved ones. You know? And from then on, I was like, this easy decision, we'll get started, this will just be a little, little side hustle of ours. Mind you, I had nothing about this boy from where? Rumuka says he's a business person. Nothing. But like I was saying, you don't have to know anything. Can I say that one more time? Yes. You don't have to know anything to get started. But to get to know everything, you have to start. Because today, a couple of years down the line, I can go toe to toe with anyone when it comes to the business of airtime remittances. But I started at zero. And that's where some of you are today. Again, you do not have to know anything like you think you need to know. I think that's one of the things that might be in your head right now. Don't need to know anything. You simply have to get started. And another, another very important one, is you don't need money to make money. You need courage, right? I personally think that this one of those things that really needs a verse in the Bible. If you're going to take anything away from me, just understand, because a lot of you might be thinking, the biggest blocker to my dreams is I actually need a lot of capital. That is incorrect. You just need courage. Courage, five years down the line, will have UFIC flying you from wherever you are 
to come and impact the next generation of entrepreneurs because of courage. So there you are, we start. Again, don't know much about that industry. And surprise, surprise, the community came through. Zimbabwe, almost 80% of our transactions were coming to Zimbabwe. And again, it's about making sure that you value the people you're doing business with. Everyone walks around with an invisible sign on their forehead that says, make me feel important. And then once you understand those dynamics, you will make more money than you ever needed in your life. Guaranteed, right? So we start, um, and before you know it, that little boy from Ramuka and his business partner have a company that is sending airtime to over 140 countries, right? something I would have never predicted, something that had we tried to put it in our heads and guys, let's make a perfect plan, would have never happened, but we simply got started. And I think I can't overstate this. This is something that you guys have to do as well. Perfection, if you're trying to achieve perfect stuff, you are only scared. It's your mind's way of trying to prevent you from actually getting started. Right, so here we are. We sent airtime to over 140 countries, but that cloud, now this God we serve is a wonderful God. Huh? We take a, a loan, a line of credit for 5 million US dollars. Saying these figures now, you know, I say 5 million like it's $5, not because I'm a wealthy man, but because my mindset is no longer in Ramoka. I'm a man who believes in possibilities. And that's what pursuing your dreams gives you confidence. You start off very hesitant, and then as you go, you start to realize, wow, you know what? This world was built by people who are no smarter than you. You know, that's the secret there. You realize, wow, you know what? I too can build a platform that people sent airtime to Afghanistan. I don't even know where that is on the map, but that's a function of getting started, right? And if I have not exhausted the point enough, I'm not telling you all these figures because I want you to be impressed, but I want you to be, to have the, it has to be embedded in you what's possible for that boy from Rimuka Good God is possible for you, 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 right? We are talking about facts. We are not talking about sentiments or anything. We're talking about things that have happened. But like I say, that cloud, right? God has a funny way of giving you problems in order to build your strength. We took a line of credit, very expensive line of credit, uh, for five million dollars and clearly it then affected the dynamics of what we were doing at Send It Who. And it was that point, again in that darkness, I said, you know what, I'm going to start a bank in the heart of London, UK. There are about four cities in the world that are the financial hub of the world and London is one of them. If you think you've seen sharks, wait till you get to London. And here I was, it's no longer, I'm no longer that boy from Ramuka. I'm a boy who believes in possibilities. I'm a boy who thinks that if I wake up and try and sell those leaves, I can sell those leaves, yeah. right? It's called growth. It only happens as a function of you taking action with your dreams. Does that make sense? Right. And here I am. We just want to start this digital bank. Uh, we're going to call it a Pan-African bank. We, we're not going to be restricted in just Zimbabwe. You know, we, we believe that we've had a test of it. We've had markets in over 140 countries would send it to. And now here we are. We're going to start a Pan-African bank. And the reason is very simple. 
you know, a lot of people really think that the biggest financer of Africa, most people would think it's uh, the Chinese or the Europeans, but it's actually on a figure basis actually incorrect. Foreign direct investment into Zimbabwe or into Africa stood at about 35 billion in 2021. Compare that with uh, remittances into Zimbabwe, it's about 100 billion. And we're just talking about the official channels. There's another 75 billion that goes through the buses of Bay Bridge or some exchange with someone that's in Australia and who wants to a house in Zimbabwe and people just do the direct. So you could add 175 billion. It's very true. Continent. Inovakwa neve nevai. Africans are building the continent of Africa, put simply put. The problem we have with that, problem we have with that is the money that's coming in is generally consumptive. It's for food, bread, butter, and things of that nature. But we are not building assets. Nobody's, for the most part, you know, it's just literally Maria school fees and things of that nature. So we thought, you know, I thought, you know what? Let's build something, first of its kind, never been done. A UK digital banking platform that allows you to do your banking in the UK and Europe, where we're currently licensed. The idea is to have it in Canada, America, and after we'll have it in Botswana, sitting domiciled in Jumbo, Africa, Botswana, further down the line. This is the kind of thinking I have come to become very accustomed to, simply because what? I got started. Can I say that one more time? I simply got started. That is something that will happen for you because, like I said, never the smartest tool in the box, but I got started. So here we are. We're going to start this digital bank for African migrants. That also, in addition to banking, that allows them to invest across the African continent in markets like Zimbabwe. That's the market we know well. We're going to do Ghana, Nigeria, Morocco and allow the children of Africa to build this continent without the influence of other people, right? And there we are. Now I learned, never take bad money. One lesson, you're always going to learn. You know, the thing about, about not achieving what you're trying to achieve is it gives you feedback. Feedback gives you knowledge, right? And knowledge, as we know it, is power, right? And that's quite important in your experience when you try and pursue all these things. Just be very conscious of what your results are telling you. And here we are. We are then decided to start Jumbo. And again, just like the accidental bet that happened with Taquana, I found myself in a place where I'm being asked for about two million pounds to start this bank. And again, it feels like $2 in my head. Mindset, right? Feels like $2. Do not worry about how you're going to achieve whatever you set out to achieve. Leave it to a greater power than you are currently able to grasp or scope. So we say, you know, this is what we're going to do. Uh, you know, uh, you know, when you set out to achieve your dreams, you know, it's, uh, the world is a funny way of helping you achieve your dreams. It conspires to achieving, helping you achieve these given outcomes. So here we are. We then said, how are we going to go about it? And then I just had one simple conversation with a friend. Like, uh, we're trying to build this, uh, pump in a few pennies that we can allow us to get the licensing, the team, the digital banking app comes at a great cost. Why don't we put something that is a company that's truly owned by its users? Fast forward, we put together that video there, thought it was an important video to watch, and we have in excess of over a million pounds in commitments from friends and family. Now you're going to have a company that is truly owned by its users, the children of Africa. We are no longer paying other institutions that are not based in Zimbabwe. We're paying them all money we have, and they don't understand the gravity of our problems, right? And here we are, we've got a company that we are starting, 
that is funded by its users. And that, again, is a simple function of one thing, simply got started. And again, like I was saying, you don't need money to make money. What do you need? And this is how simple your dreams and the achieving them could be. It's a lot more complex, I would agree that, because from day one, you're going to get punched in the mouth because there's a, a law called Murphy's Law. I don't know if you guys know it. It says what could go wrong will go wrong. Once you decide, you know what, I'm going to pursue a particular dream, this is what I'm trying to achieve. Murphy's Law will put you in a position, it'll be waiting for you by the corner, and then pow, right in your mouth. You're going to lay down flat. The trick is to fall down eight and get up nine. All the time, right? And keep pushing. That's one of the most important things that you have to do. And this is where where we are today, we are launching Jumbo on the 1st of July, the first of its kind, right in the heart of London, UK. And the trick here, my brothers and sisters, is we simply got started. That boy from where? Is here as a result of simply getting started. I do not want to make this message any complex than it has to be. It's simply that. Get started on your dreams, dust them up, and have really big dreams. Because like I was saying earlier, the challenge you face is what we feel is possible is always a function of the people around us and what they're doing. That's the problem. So what we need as a community is not more people buying combis. Remember, when the combis came around, everyone started to buy combis. One person started a tuck shop. The entire neighborhood started a tuck shop. But the trick as a community, as a young, black, and hungry community, is we just need much elevated examples. We need people to say, as Zimbabwe hasn't flown in X amount of years, my name is Chipo, and I'm going to start an airplane business. And if people don't laugh at you, it means your dreams are too small. Right? That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. I was asked to speak for an hour, but I would rather have interactions with you guys and just have questions, and then just take it from there. Thank you very much. We'll take questions. How do I expand my clothing shop? And within me, the way I'm operating is not my capacity. It's not, what, what do you mean it's not your capacity? Like? You don't feel it's, it's a field that you, uh, you know very well? Yes. So you, my sister, I haven't been listening. We did say you don't have to know anything in any given field or area. You want to start a plain business, you want to start a fashion business, you simply get to have start. But what's important is you need to take ownership of your dreams. Huh? Hold yourself responsible for the knowledge gap that you have and feeling it, you know. I never used to read any books till I was like 25 years old. I've read in excess of 400 books now. All right. So it's your responsibility, own your dreams, because your dreams matter, and get to know the things that you don't know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Cheers. So the question that I want to ask is, uh, most people uh, that are starting business, they start business very well and it's flowing, but at some point uh, they are not able to maintain what they've already started. So my question is, from your own perspective, what are the challenges that most people, these people that are having, uh, what are the factors that causes most business to fail? Like it's, uh, I won't mention the person 
is very close to me. Yeah, so I want to ask what, what are the factors that causes people to fail in business? So, so, so it's a very good question. I think it's one of the reasons why people don't start businesses in the first place. I think failure is something that, as a culture, has a lot of stigma, you see. In the UK, completely different. These people are competing to fail because they know one thing, you have to to fail in order to succeed. There's just nobody in the... When you look at... when you, I'll give you an example. Let's say the most successful business person here in Zimbabwe, for example, is probably Strive Masiwa, right? Do you know how many of his ventures have failed? And yet, he's the most successful. But then you have somebody that has just failed once. You've got maybe a Tawanda. He starts a business, he fails, and then he stops. And then on the other hand, you've got a Strive, he starts this business, he fails, he keeps going, he keeps going, he fails again. So ultimately, let's say nine of his businesses fail, but then he has Echo Cash. He's a billionaire. He's failed way more than Gamwe has or Tawanda has, but he's succeeded in the same vein as well. Failure is part of success. You can't avoid it. And as a people, we need to understand it. What you need to do is try and avoiding the same mistakes. You know, it's, it's insanity. You know, insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Learn from your experiences. Does that make sense, my brother? Yeah. Uh, I understand you say that to start a business, you do not need capital, money. You just need courage to start doing something. And in this instance, I have started a business a few years ago, just after high school in my gap year. And what I want to know now is I want to, I'm about to finish my fourth year degree. I, I want to know how to expand that business uh, in terms of it needs equipment, machinery, you need to hire people. And that would need a bit more capital that is out of my reach. And how then do you do that? Uh, taking into account how you said you do not need money. I know that's not really capital to start, it's to expand. So how do I, you know, do that? In terms of mass production. That's, that's, a, that's a very good question, right? I, I need to make something very obvious to everybody. Money might not be the most important thing in life, but it's up there with oxygen. We all need it. Huh? What I'm saying is, right at the beginning, you have limited money in your pocket. That should never be a reason why you don't pursue your dreams. Two different ways of looking at it. And now, let's, for example, look at uh, uh, Baba and uh, Mama Makandiwa. I don't know when UFIC started. Let's assume 2010. They have zero zero uh, church attendees and zero youth coming to church. And you can imagine, we put you and them in the same sort of place where you, example, let's swap their lives with you. Let's put, let's put your life where you are trying to raise X amount of capital. Results, the point being, if they take your life, they will do things you're currently not doing. They'll pick up the call, do what needs to be done, they will reach out to X and Y, Z, because resources huh, in life are only as a result of how resourceful you are. Does that make sense? Huh? You have zero. Instead of being on WhatsApp for three hours, you could be calling people, all I need is a dollar from you, my friend. And then we can come together and put together a cap table. Do you know what a cap table is? I don't know what a cap table. So it's actually, you become a member, you are put on the shareholder structure. I think it's a smart idea. And this is what I feel in four years and this and that, you can make money and think, because the world has changed, huh? People are making a hundred thousand off the back of TikTok videos. People are making money in their pajamas. So our thinking has to shift when we were expected by our parents to be nurses, doctors, teachers, again, noble professions, but, uh, but we are different. You guys are built different. Uh, you're just a different kind. So you need to be 
very much resourceful in that sense. So I think that's the point there. You need to get into that space where you understand you need capital um, and how resourceful are you? How are you using your time? How many calls have you made in search of that capital? Because it's very key. It could be the lifeline of your business. Um, so you just have to take full ownership of your dreams and hold yourself responsible for whatever outcomes you get for searching this kind of... And this is what I was hoping a couple of people would pick up from the video. We could have simply said two million pounds is a little bit much. Uh, and one of the reasons we got into actually reaching out to the community was very simple. In the UK, startups raise, or in the world actually, raise about 500 billion in terms of uh, venture capital uh, funding, right? But when you look at those numbers, black founders make less than 1% of that. The world likes us or doesn't like us, you could easily turn around and say, you know what, this is where the world is, I'm not going to try. But no, resourcefulness. We put together a video, and now we have almost 400 shareholders. Some of them are based in Zimbabwe. They have a company that's UK listed, that at some point will pay them dividends. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. I respect men like you because I'm also a young entrepreneur and I know what it takes to get to where you are. Uh, my, my, my question is mainly, uh, as a black community, we have a tendency where when I start a business, even when I'm young, family members have a tendency of trying to come and enjoy from profits, yet you haven't reached a certain amount. So how do you control that pressure where you're like trying to build your business, but the pressure is still coming from your family where they think you are maybe almost a millionaire, but you're still trying to join your thing so that they can start working. I, I think I saw a meme that said, um, people have a way of just you know, disheartening people that they're quite close to, for all sorts of reasons. Here's an important stat that I actually found out pretty early when we started business. Almost eight out of 10 people that support your business are people you don't understand, or people you don't know, right? That's just the fact of life. And so instead of wasting your time trying to push, and it speaks to, you know, I think one of the things that happens to you when you're born in certain environments, say Rimuka and so forth, is you start to have a, a mentality that the world is, has got very few options. That option or that statement is not true. The world is seven billion people. You wait, I'll get my customers from people that buy or believe in what I'm doing, not necessarily you. So I think the biggest problem that you tend to face is you wake up in the morning, you want to, you've got this dream, and the people who are closest to you, statistically speaking, are never going to support you. 80% of the people that buy into your business literally are people you do not know today. And there you are, day one, you wake up in the morning, mom, dad, I wanna do this. That's a terrible idea, sit down. And if you are, don't have the right mindset, you will immediately believe that this is the, not going to work out. The money is in the people you don't know. Hope that makes sense. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Takwana. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I was watching your video as it was starting, is the platform to invest still open and how do we go about it? It, it is, it is still open. Um, and like I said, we've had in excess of almost 400 people that have invested. Uh, that literally pretty much just makes my heart, puts me in a beautiful place because we are building. I mean, money is one thing. We are literally trying to build a company that's going to make the continent proud. And we are obligated to our shareholders that we'd go about and do that and perfect it as well as we can. And I don't know if you guys know, um, I knew we had made it huh? when we were in a position. I don't, know, I don't know if you guys know a gentleman called Kieran McSherry. He was the Irish guy 
He used to be the CEO for First Capital Bank. I think he did the whole transition from, uh, from Barclays to First Capital when they moved out of Zimbabwe. He was responsible for that. He was the CEO for that. Um, late last year, he moved back to the UK. But the point is, we were putting people in place that are qualified enough to actually get the job done, right? Because very often than not, you know, uh, you really need to know yourself, what you bring to the table, where your strengths lie, and also where your weaknesses are. I am not a banking person. And the best way you can trim down however long in the trials and errors that you can go through is by putting people in position that can get uh, your shareholders their dividends that they're looking for. And again, it speaks to, you know, his validation of the business is very big because this is a gentleman who turned down a job as a CEO for, for an asset management firm called BlackRock. These guys manage assets in excess of in the trillions. And he said, let me look at what you're doing. Turns the whole, opens up the car boot. He was like, you guys are onto something. I want to be part of it. And I'm just a boy from where? Thank you very much. Thank you so much um, for the opportunity. Um, so my question has two parts, but mainly the one being about, you talked about the switch in environments which helped to obviously progress your dream and ideas. But what would you do if you're someone who's still in Zimbabwe and you cannot afford to go anywhere or you don't get that kind of opportunity, but you still have business ideas? And, and the second part would be about age. For example, you're at 13 or 16 and you're in Zimbabwe to make it maybe even worse. Who would you talk to? Where would you go for assistance? Who would help you to really awaken your dream and make it possible? Thank you. I, I see a lot of people can identify with, uh, with that question. Um, Zimbabwe. Do, do you think that uh, there are people who are not doing well in Zimbabwe? No? Huh? It's quite, quite a lot of people that are doing well. And again, it's, you know, I think very often, you know, I think somebody told me something very early on in my life uh, when I got to London. They said the smartest thing you can ever do is if you want to achieve whatever you're trying to achieve, just switch your postcode. You know, um, you're staying here, if you want to, if you want to be a football player, go to a postcode or an environment where the people are, are actually uh, playing football. And before you know it, your mindset just changes. You want to make money, do the same thing, switch, make that sacrifice where you pay more rent, but you're starting to pick up on the ideas and the habits of people who you want to become, right? Best way to shortcut, there's no shortcut by the way, but best way to ever achieve what you're trying to do is surround yourself with people that are achieving the kind of things that they want. I've made a commitment today simply because what I've seen in this room that I am going to be always that voice that you ever need any advice, I am happy to tell you my story. As young people, that's an obligation, like I said. If you're ever lucky enough to catch a break in your life, always send the elevator back down. And I will always, I will create a platform. I will always be, uh, I don't know all the answers, but I will always say, this is what we did to get where we are. And succeeding, what's important? One really important thing. Let's assume succeeding is the number 10, right? We all cannot get there by adding five plus five and getting 10. Some of you add 90 <laughs> minus 80 to get to 10. Some of you will be 12 minus two. Some of you will be eight plus two. It's just so many ways to achieving our dreams. Yeah. Yes. How do you project your business? Let's say you have started a business and someone with better funding comes to you and is interested in doing partnership with you. So what do you need to consider before accepting the partnership? Uh, 
uh, Zimbabweans, uh, we, we love NDAs, huh? uh, but those things don't really work. Um, me personally, this is how I deal with, with any given idea. Ideas are a dime in a business, a dime in a dozen, right? Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Your idea that you're trying to come up with is something that has been done before, right? What you need to have, the mentality you need to have is more an abundance mentality that the market is big enough and I pretty much will have my own niche and I will serve one customer unlike, like in the same way your FIC has treated me today. Make me feel important. The importance about, um, about uh, customers and everything and marketing and everything, nobody believes what they see on billboards anymore. 80% of people's buying decisions are a function of someone saying to them, hey, I watched this movie, you need to go watch it. Hey, I'm using this product, you need to go watch it. That's why your focus isn't necessarily on the ecosystem and competitors that you're dealing with, but on just serving one particular customer. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's, what's for you is for you, you see. And you don't have to worry about whether or not someone else is going to replicate your idea. Yes. Yeah. Once again, thank you very much for spending this afternoon with me. In my wildest dreams, I would have never, 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 never thought this was possible. But I'll just leave on one simple little poem that I've come to remix and I would want to share with you guys. And I feel like most of you identify with it. Our biggest fear is never that we are an adequate African child. Our biggest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is not our darkness that most scares us, but our light. We ask ourselves, who am I to try and change this world? You, my friends, are children of God, and your playing small does not save the world. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Taquana, and may God bless your dreams. Thank you.